We love to travel, probably away from the classic travel rules. My passion is to take photos and to capture the world and life with all its beauty. And it's my passion to put our trips together. I'm always looking for extraordinary places. We want to share our pictures and our experiences with you and we want to inspire you. Argentina is for us the lively city of Buenos Aires with lots of culture, tango and delicious steaks. And Argentina offers a breathtakingly beautiful endless nature far away from civilization which can change completely after a few kilometers and with a sky as endless wide as we have never seen before. Follow us on our trips through Buenos Aires and our road trips through Argentina's northwestern provinces, Salta and Yuchu. And don't forget to subscribe. We arrived in Buenos Aires in the evening and our way led us straight to a Barilla Grill to get in the mood of culinary Argentina with a delicious steak. For starters we had homemade empanadas while we watched the grill masters as they grilled various steaks, cheese and sausages over the hot coals. Incredible delicious! The next day it was a bit rainy, but that didn't bother us, it was warm. In January it is summer in Argentina and we were happy to escape the cold Swiss winter. We visited the famous old cemetery, Cementerio La Recoleta, and the weather was perfect for the morbid charm of the old cemetery, where also the famous Eva Perón is buried. We heard from residents of Buenos Aires that the city does not always have a reputation for being particularly safe. We always felt safe in the city center even if we were advised by the locals to pack our cameras in our bags. Once when we got in the wrong bus and landed in a problem area, we already felt a certain tension in the air. However, we ourselves have not had any negative experiences in Buenos Aires. In Buenos Aires you can clearly feel the many European influences both architecturally and culinary. We visited the most beautiful bookstore we have ever seen. It's in an old European looking opera. And ice cream and pizza are our culinary heritage of Italian immigrants. Pizza Argentina style with lots of cheese. Delicious. In the port district of Puerto Madero, there is a charming mix of old port buildings and modern skyscrapers. Many chic restaurants, yachts and the skyscrapers characterize the quarter. We were very surprised by one fact. Getting cash is a real challenge in Buenos Aires and all of Argentina. Many machines are empty, not working or whatever. The fees are high and the amounts that can be drawn are small. And so we had to go to a few banks to get some Argentina pesos. After we had nearly walked across the whole Buenos Aires, it was time for break with live tango music. We ended the evening with another delicious cheesy pizza before we were to take the plane to Salta the next day. On our last day in Buenos Aires, we finally had sunshine. The small airport for domestic flights is located directly on the Rio de la Plata. The blue sky gave a total contrast to the unusual color of the Rio de la Plata. And while we waited for a flight to Salta, we enjoyed a delicious steak sandwich, watched the fishermen and enjoyed the relaxed atmosphere on the water.
in Zelta we took a small rental car and we were really looking forward to our upcoming road trip through the endless wideness of Argentina's northwest. The charming colonial town of Salta has a wide range of bars and restaurants. We decided on a Parilla restaurant and once again had an exquisite steak with delicious side dishes. We couldn't wait to leave the cities behind us and explore Argentina's nature on our own. Our way led us north on Ruta Nacional No. 9. The landscape was lush green and there were free-range cattle and horses everywhere. How much space the animals have here. You can really see how well they are doing. Within a short time the nature changed and getting drier and the first cacti appeared. There was little going on on the streets and so we could make one of our countless photo stops everywhere. The landscape became more and more impressive from kilometer to kilometer. On our trip through India we met two Argentinians who said my Mara had the best empanadas. Of course we didn't want to miss that and tried delicious llama empanadas in a tiny local restaurant. Incredibly delicious. We immediately ordered more for takeaway provisions. We had rented accommodation for a few days in the small town Tilcara. What a contrast of the capital Buenos Aires. Many indigenous Argentinians live in this area and the quiet town is located in the middle of the rough, beautiful landscape with the well-known colorful mountains of this region. We followed the Ruta 9 north to Huma Huaca. The farther north we came, the more lonely and rough nature became. Even if it was getting cooler, the river had dried up. We couldn't get enough of the colorful mountains and rocks. Absolutely stunning, beautiful. Umawaka is a small quiet village that is set for tourism and offers everything a traveler's heart desires.
Back in Tilcara we learn what a real Argentine asado is. Here a whole lump was drenched out and roasted over glowing coals. Of course, various pieces of beef and sausages should not be missing. We have seldom eaten such delicious meat. Yummy! On our way to Salinas Grandes, we made a short stop in the quiet Pumacara to stock up on provisions. The road slowly winds up with the landscape becoming more and more rough. As we reach the Cuesta de Lipan, 4170 meters above the sea level, we saw the first wild vicuñas and llamas. Because we are often in the mountains of Switzerland, we did not have any problems with altitude, even if the air was much thinner up here. In these harsh conditions, life and death are very close together. And there it was in front of us, the huge salt lake Salinas Grandes. The street led straight to it. We have seldom seen such an infinitely white sky. What a spectacle, blue sky, white clouds and a huge white salt lake. We were deeply impressed, what a scenery. But that didn't stop us from making a little nonsense. Shortly after the Salina Grandes we turned onto the famous Ruta National 40. The historic road leads from the Bolivian border in the north to the south of Argentina, just before Tierra del Fuego. Because we didn't have the time to drive the entire route, we wanted to explore at least a part of the route. And here the real adventure of our Argentina trip began. The landscape was endless and untouched, and the bridges were adventurous. We only saw a few houses and the aggressive watchdogs suggested that seldom strangers would come by here. The Ruta 40 here in the north is nothing more than a gravel road in a more or less good condition. Our little rental car did well. But next time we will definitely take a more stable car. Absolutely recommended for this route. Especially when it rains. This untouched nature, far away from civilization, touched us deeply and we felt transported back to a time long before humans left traces everywhere. The last stretch before San Antonio de las Cobras was probably the most adventurous of our Argentina trip. The gravel road got worse and worse and sometimes very muddy and we wondered where the water came from. With the street getting narrower and narrower we were also glad not to have any oncoming traffic. After we and our small rental car had arrived safely in San Antonio de los Cobras, it was time to strengthen us with a portion of empanadas. We went south on the Ruta National 40, 
The cacti that were everywhere were beautiful to look at, and we didn't expect them to grow that tall. The breathtakingly beautiful wild nature here in the northwest of Argentina made us rave so much and we thought every day that it couldn't be topped. We were thought better every day that it could be still more and more beautiful. Probably the most fascinating route for us was the one between Cachi and Cafayate. The natural spectacle was constantly changing and the colors of the rocks and the formation could be completely different within a very short time, which made our photographer's heart beat faster. And so we just had to make a photo stop every few kilometers. A hitchhiker was standing on a road to Cafayate. We decided to take him with us, as there were so few cars passing by. Here he would have had to wait hours in the sun until someone else could take him with him. As it turned out, he was a young Argentinian backpacker and the dog groomer from Buenos Aires. Our passenger was infected by our enthusiasm for the landscape and so the three of us had to do a stop every few kilometers. The highlight of the route was definitely the Quebrada de las Flechas, the road wind between the sharp rocks, and it was as if we were driving through a fantasy world. Incredibly beautiful. Shortly before Cafayate we met gauchos. Argentine cowboys who greeted us with a warm smile that we had seldom seen in the more reserved Argentines. In Cafayate we finally reached the paved roads again. What a relief after we were shaken up quite a bit on the gravel roads. Before our return flight from Salta we had some extra time and explored the area on Ruta Provincial 33. And the landscape here was completely different again and with the green mountains it reminds us a bit of the highlands of Scotland. Argentina has a big place in our hearts with its breathtakingly beautiful, varied and endless nature. And instead of satisfy our wanderlust, the wonderful pictures only fueled them. For us, Argentina is a longing destination, and we will definitely come back to explore Argentina on the Ruta 40, completely, from north to south. We would be very happy about a like and subscribe to the channel for further travel inspiration.